So in this video, I just want to talk about yesterday. I came out here and worked on the car a little bit and try and get it to crank with the key. And everything just turned out to be a total, everything that was a fiasco. It could, if it could go wrong, it went wrong. It was one of those kind of days. So let me uh, kind of go over what I did. The first off, um, when I went in to edit the video, the memory card, I couldn't get the videos off. I did manage to get a couple of clips off, so I'll, I'll put some of those in with this video, but a lot of the video was, I think the memory card is just bad. It just had a lot of use on it, and just after a while, I just don't hold the memory anymore. I got a new uh, neutral safety switch. Check, like check balls, and their little balls is all that's in there for the contacts. That jumps those connections. So I'm going to fix the old switch. I found a couple of carburetor fuel accelerator pump check balls that work and everything else was in the old original switch other than whatever was making the contacts which I believe was check balls. So I'm going to put it together and see if it works. I fixed this one with a couple of check balls for uh, accelerator pumps on carburetors so hopefully they're stainless steel balls so they shouldn't shouldn't uh, rust and it does work I tested it with an ohm meter all right with much horsing around and a whole day wasted checking wiring and everything I'm come to the conclusion it's got a bad ignition switch too see I can wiggle a switch when that light comes on that simulates the engine cranking when that light goes out, it's not cranking. So, see, I turn it to start. Sometimes a little there, and then you wiggle it, and it comes on. I've had somebody hold the key, and I went around and wiggled wiring and connectors and everything under the sun, and consistently, see, I wiggle a key switch wiggle it around and then that light comes on and whenever that lights on the engine will crank that's what energizes the solenoid so yeah no wonder why the car was parked after you know this is bad the neutral start switch was bad the starter was bad the flywheel was stripped oh and by the way the reverse lights work now so Yeah. So if you've been watching my videos from the beginning, you'll remember the ignition switch was hanging down here by the wiring. And the original ignition switch looked like it was cut out with a sawzall. So I assume that somebody had tried to get this car cranking and it had just had a multitude of problems in the starting system. Um, the neutral start switch was bad. That's right here. Well, no light, sorry. But anyway, that's that was bad, so I got a new one and put it in, and then I could get intermittent uh, power at the solenoid. You know, I put a test light in it, and you'll see in the little video clips I put in. So when you'd turn the key to, to start, the light most of the time wouldn't come on. And uh, so... I wiggled all the wiring under the dash. First I thought it was the new neutral start switch because it was intermittent. So I wiggled all the uh, switch and stuff and that really made no difference and I took the switch out and looked at it and saw there was a couple little like ball bearings that uh, made the contact, little brass or copper bearings. So I found a couple carburetor check balls and fixed the original neutral safety switch and put it in and it did the same exact thing so I put the new one back in still doing the exact same thing and then I took the key and held it and start and then wiggled wiring under the dash and connectors and everything to see if there was a bad connection and it was still the same didn't change anything so I had someone come and hold the key and start and moved all the wiring under the hood still no difference so i took the, the ignition switch back out of the dash unplugged the connector used a jumper lead and then the light continuously stayed lit with the jumper lead 
So I took my ohm meter, and this is a brand new ignition switch, the the, the uh, switch itself. And uh, so I took an ohm meter with it and start, and it was definitely the ignition switch that's bad. Brand new ignition switch that's no good. And I noticed on it, it also said made in China. So I ordered a new ignition switch, and it's a new old stock one that's made in the USA. And we'll put that in the dash, and hopefully that will take care of the issue. So I don't think the original ignition switch, you know, I mean, the cranking system in this car right now, bad ignition switch, it had a bad neutral safety switch, a bad starter drive in the starter, and a strip flywheel. And I have half a notion to test the solenoid to see if it's any good, um, the original starter solenoid. So no wonder why the car sat parked for... 43 years, I think they just gave up on trying to get the engine to crank because everything in the starting and cranking system was compromised. So anyway, we got a good neutral safety switch, a good starter, a good flywheel. It cranks regularly with the remote start switch, just trying to get it to crank with the key. And I do need to adjust the neutral safety switch just slightly, but I'm going to wait until I get the new key. It does, uh, the reverse lights come on flawlessly. And also I noticed sometimes when you turn the key on and off, the alternator light wouldn't come on. And if you wiggled this, the alternator light would come on. And uh, so I think it's just the new cheap made in China ignition switch that's the issue. But then there's this collar when it's like in gear. See how it has a little bit of movement in it? It's just a little bit. And that little bit I can adjust out of the neutral safety switch to where when it's in that slop area it still works. But I can get that slop out and I'll show you how. And also this lever, there's a little uh, metal thing in there that's missing. That So that's why the lever is loose in the column. And I'm going to be taking that out for chrome plating and I'll, I'll address that when I take it out for chrome plating. And uh, so let me show you what, what causes this right here. And, uh, and then we'll get to moving, doing some things out. This the is the shift linkage right here. And this is all nice and tight. That's all nice and tight. You can see down there the bell crank. Everything is nice and tight. I'll show you where it needs some attention. This is where the linkage attaches to the transmission. And that's where I can actually move things a little bit right there. So I'm going to take that out and put a little, there's supposed to be a little spring clip in there. I'm going to go find one and put it in there that holds that tighter. And I'm also going to get a, I got all these little brass sleeves so I can sleeve this into this so that fits nice and tight so that column doesn't have the slop in it up there. Well, there's the neutral safety switch. Hopefully it shows up there. Let me try and get the light so it's not blasting in the... But that moves this right here. This is part of the column. And as you can see with that um, slop in the column, whoops, see how it moves the switch? That's why I want to take the slop out of the column to eliminate that. Um, I pulled all the wiring down when I was checking all the wiring out. And... Uh, you know, look it all over anyway. It's all in pretty good shape. Oh, and get a load of this. Um, get that, the parking brake cable to the, to that bracket at the transmission is as free as can be. And the parking brake cables to the drums look like they're free too. I'm gonna start on the rear brakes today, I do believe. All right, I'm gonna cut the transmission cooler line to length. And to get nice even cuts, I use these, uh, these are PCV uh, cutters. Let me, I'll show you the package. This is what it is right here. They cut heater hose, any kind of hose you want. Just super nice cut. You don't end up with messed up ends or crooked ends. It cuts nice and square. And oh, and I got the shop manual sitting here. And there's a typo in here. This is telling you how to adjust the 
neutral safety switch. So it clearly states, um, it says place the transmission selector lever firmly against the stop of the neutral detent and uh, you're supposed to put a little drill bit in this hole that holds that arm that goes into a certain position and when you do it in neutral it doesn't even come close to the thing that should be park not neutral so yeah that's kind of a you see, you know you see that in shop manuals occasionally it's you know they're written by humans and humans are far from perfect so yeah all right i got the transmission cooler lines connected up so when i start cranking the engine over i don't pump fluid out onto the floor all right i'm installing the heater hoses and i just wanted to make sure i could position the clamps and not hit anything on the carburetor that's why i just set the carburetor back there just to make sure i have clearances with everything so i'm going to tighten those clamps up all right i got these heater hose clamps on them just I just think these reproduction clamps are kind of crappy. If I rated them on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give them a 2. And that's only because they look correct. The clamps kept twisting off on an angle, you know, where the screw would go in and go out, pop out of that little hole they go in. I'll show you on one. Well, they don't really show up on the bigger clamps, but there's a little button that when this screws down in, Right, you can see it on the back side that that screw is supposed to stay in and it's not. It's popping off on the side and, you know, like coming in on an angle like that and tightening one side of the clamp, not the other. I horsed with that back clamp there for probably 40 minutes trying to get it to clamp properly. These two went on all right and these two went on all right. That one, pain. This one I've just thrown in the towel and given up on. Um, I don't know what to do. It just doesn't want to clamp right. So, yeah, I, I give them a two only because of the appearance. They're just, just garbage. See how it's starting to go crooked already? And it's popping out of that thing. And the more I tighten it, the worse it gets. Look at that. Yeah, totally garbage. 100% pure garbage. Probably made in China. That's how the heater hose kind of routed and goes through there. I don't have clamps for these and I got to take this off for purge the air out when I put coolant in it and I'll cut this one to the correct length when I go to put it on. I'm not sure if there's a bracket to hold it there or not so I got to do a little research on that. I don't want to cut the hose until I know exactly how it's routed. Radiator hose clamps actually tighten up okay. And <clears throat> got both the upper and lower. I just put them both on. Sorry, I hit the hand blade with the camera. So those clamps are okay. The heater hose clamps, like I say, I give them a two. Custom Crafters is sending me out a couple replacements for those two that just kept bending over. And uh, I ordered two more for these because the kit only, like I say, it came with 10 and it was supposed to come with 12. So this is where I'm at. I'm going to take the drums off and start cleaning. You know, you can see there's an L on there, so the rear brakes had been done on this car at one time. I do think I sprayed penetrant around there because these things are seized on there. I'm going to beat them with a hammer, and then I'm going to start get the brakes off, get the gas tank out. The control arm bushings, I really looked at them good, and I don't know if you can, well, anyway, they're all in really good shape no cracks or anything so I don't think I'm going to pull a differential out from under the car um, we'll see I'm going to get in there and start getting things apart and cleaning I'm going to replace the springs and uh, the shocks but I need to start getting things apart so I can get this done and then I can get this all painted back here and the exhaust on and get the car moving under its own power. This is really in good shape back here. I mean, the frame's got some surface rust on it. That's black in there is all paint. The underside there, you can see where the sound deadening has come off there. Shiny black paint. Shocks they don't look like they're leaking, but they... They look like, I don't know, they're black. I don't know, they might have been replaced at one time. 
the tailpipe was hitting it there and uh, this rubber grommet right here the rubber that needs to be replaced um, but yeah it looks pretty good I think we'll clean this all up under here it looks like I might replace the pan hard bar bushings but all the control arm bushings, I mean, they aren't even, there isn't even cracks in them. They're like brand new. They really look good. So I think I'm going to leave the differential under the car. And uh, no point in replacing something that's perfectly fine if they go bad in the future. They're not, you know, I can change them in the future. But I'm going to work on uh, getting the brake drums off too. I got the tailpipe out. Pipe's actually really solid. It's not weak anywhere. The only place that it's really bad is right here where the muffler attached. And uh, but the rest of the pipe, yeah, super good shape. Obviously, I'm going to replace it, but I don't know if that's the original pipe or not. It could very well be. Well, I found the little spring clip washer. I put on that linkage down there at the transmission and that took a ton of the that's nice and tight now so I think we're all good there and the, the little piece that that's just the lever loose in the in the column thing there and that's because there's a little piece missing in there probably wore out and fell out I'm working on removing the gas tank got the fuel hose the sending it off you can see Look how clean these inner wheel walls are. That's the shadow from the camera, sorry, but this is that drain that was plugged that caused the box at that end to get some rust in it. And uh, I'll repair all that. But yeah, it's in really good shape, this car. So. I got uh, two strap bolts to undo, and we'll get the tank down and out. I even took the filler neck screws, you know, these screws out here. Probably take those ones that rubber seal off too, but that's the little drain thing that's plugged up that caused the rust in there. That will make life easier to repair that in there with this off, and plus it'll make it easier to paint the car I can paint all sides of this so it all looks nice paint all this and in here to this pocket it was originally body color you can see some nasty runs right there but yeah it's uh it's gonna i'm gonna fix all that that's the plugged up drain hose so i got the fuel tank out you can see the underneath here i'll clean let me turn the camera around how clean that is and that's where the filler neck went through. So all this will be really easy to access with that fuel tank out. I'll get the springs out and replace anything that needs replacing. Go through, clean everything up, and uh, get everything painted. Replace the hydraulic. Whatever needs to be done, I'll do. So it's just a matter of... Of, um, this weekend getting out here and I'm going to get the brake drums off and we'll, uh, we'll get tear into this rear part of the car hardcore so I can get it running and driving. There you can kind of see the rust damage in that um, filler neck hole. Sorry about the shadow from the camera. I was shoving it right in there. But that's really it. The rest of it's solid. That's just where water sat because that drain tube was plugged up. But yeah, the gas tank's going to have to go to the radiator shop to be cleaned. I'll show you the inside of it. It's pretty nasty. The gas tank straps are really in nice shape. I'll bead blast them and paint them. But yeah, I'm going to stuff something in there to keep the smell out there. So O-ring right there, I'm going to take it out and save it. That's what seals the filler neck there. The Catalina was the same way, but can you see in there? Yeah. 
there's the sending unit. The float. And then there's just about a quarter inch of varnished gas in the bottom. The tank was empty. But there is some sludgy gas in there. That's 43 years of being parked. So I'm going to uh, take this to the radiator shop where I had the radiator and heater cord done. I'll take drop that off Monday. Get that all cleaned out. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to turn to the back here. Get, you know, because I'm not putting that back in until it's all cleaned and painted under there. So, yeah, that's about I'm going to might might pull a sending unit. I, but, well, I'm going to wait. I don't want the smell in the garage. I got to stuff something in there. And I'm just going to wait, take the sending unit out until when I go to take it in. It just stinks so bad. This is the o-ring that seals the filler neck. And I bet money that that is the same as the one that the Catalina used. And uh, I got another one laying around somewhere, another couple of them, because I bought a package of, I don't know, I think it was a package of five for two or three dollars. I don't remember. They were really inexpensive, these o-rings. I didn't get them. I just went and bought an o-ring. And, uh, but I'll, uh, I'll look and if I don't have it, I'll get a new O-ring. But I gotta cover that hole up. It just smells hideous. I think I'm gonna repair the rust in here before I put the fuel tank in. So it's gonna be a few couple weeks anyway before that goes back in because I wanna get everything taken care of with the rear, the suspension, the brakes, paint, get all that taken care of, get this taken care of, and I can paint the inside of here body color. And then I can uh, put the fuel tank in. Then when I paint the car, I can just mask this off and just so I spray this or just stuff something in here so I don't get overspray in there. But that's kind of my goal is to fix that. That'll be a pretty easy repair. It's not a lot to it. It's pretty simple, pretty cut and dry. I can hammer out a piece that'll fit in there and weld it in. And so that's my goals. You know, people have been asking me what's next. Well. That's next. This is next. Fixing that rust. The brake suspension. Whatever needs to be done in here. And the paint so I can get the car moving under its own power. You can kind of see that rust hole from in here too. But the rest of it's all as solid as a rock. So we got a little rust there. A little rust here. A little rust well on the other side. But I'm sure I'm going to have some in here too because it looks like a common galaxy problem and fix the bottom edges of the door, corners of the doors and uh, the rust will be pretty much all taken care of. That's the only rust in the car. That, that, there's probably going to be a hole there, there, here. I'm sure there's going to be a hole there once I get to hammering away at it and here this door I don't think there's a little bit I might have to repair a little bit right here because that's a little, a little rough so I might have to just you know weld in a little air but the back of the door everything else is fine quarter panel is fine I'm going to take the interior trim panels out so I can get in behind there so I don't uh, start anything on fire in the inner panel that I can't put out. And uh, that's kind of where I'm going with the car right now for the people that have just been curious. So after I get all the underneath done and I can put the exhaust and everything back on, the brakes up and working and everything to where the car will be pretty much all mechanically done, then I can focus on the cosmetics of the car. And uh, I got to call a dash place. I'm probably going to do that Monday or Tuesday to get the ball rolling on the dash. And uh, so, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. If, if people were wondering, I was looking in the shop manual and they show this heater hose going up over the engine like that. I don't know if I like it like that, but that's the way they show it. Um, 
so maybe we'll do that. We'll see. We'll, uh, we'll wait until closer to when I'm ready to put coolant in because I'm going to leave the heater hoses, at least the top one off, so I can purge the air. But it's uh, coming along really nice. Well, I don't know how dirty my face is from being under the car removing that gas tank, but I'm going to call it a day. So if you like my video, hit the like button. If you want to see this old galaxy back on the road, subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching.